Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. It's a great honor to be here. Thank you to Professor for the invitation. Um, I'll just explain a bit about my background for the approach that I take to this question of should we erase trauma memories. My background is primarily in philosophy and then I specialized in medical ethics during my master's and my PhD. And in parallel to my philosophy, I studied psychoanalysis um, for four years. And I specialize in there within in trauma, particularly persons affected by war and torture. And I uh, developed some international experience from that in various countries um, to try and gather together people's narratives and uh, explore the phenomenon that's present in uh, people who've experienced trauma. Now I'm uh, working at University College London. I'm teaching at the medical school there and I'm involved in various international collaborations in the research. And here I've tried to synthesize my um, research in trauma uh, with the, an ethical perspective. So looking at the normative question of whether in light of uh, current ex advancements in neuroscience and um, modern medicine, what happens when it becomes more viable possibility to uh, develop a more targeted memory uh, medicine to erase memories that evoke trauma. And I'll explain during this presentation um, um, the issues that I feel are most important and, um, and why, why this is of particular concern at the moment. So just to introduce the talk, um, modern medicine now is often new challenges in the treatment of its patients. The nature of uh, medicine and the treatments that we can offer has, has changed radically. It's, it's not uh, a simple dyadic relationship between a person experiencing an illness or a disease and finding a cure. There are many therapies that are offered in medicine that are surplus to the biological uh, function that it attends to um, treat. So and also uh, the nature of illness has changed as well. And the, um, for example, boundaries of the beginning of life have been altered. The end of life has been altered through the establishment of life support machines. They've called into question what is the definition of death. Reproductive technologies have pushed the beginnings of life um, earlier. So we're facing lots more metaphysical questions which raise ethical challenges for medicine than um, we previously experienced before. And in parallel to this, um, it's also important to remember that medicine is not, does not operate as an independent system. It's related to the society around it. And our societies have been changing. Modern warfare has changed. Um, the damage that can be caused in battle is uh, much more atrocious now than um, 100 years ago. Uh, globali globalization has been another recent phenomena, so we're seeing um, mass migration from um, many countries. Um, London, for example, in the hospital where I'm a member of the Clinical Ethics Committee, we have over 300 languages spoken. So th this is also the, the cross-cultural aspects of medicine are infiltrating in ways that have not been experienced before. The population's exploded. The, um, there's debated arguably that there are increasing um, natural disasters, the, m the number of people being affected um, by such things is increasing. And psychiatric illness is also, uh, in the context of Western scientific medicine, has changed. It's, uh, it's moved away from metaphysical accounts, m uh, away from traditional cultural accounts. Um, so, for example, some of my work in South Africa. Um, you will speak to the population there and they'll explain illness, the causation of illness in terms of spirit, possession, um, more behaviour from the ancestors, whereas now mental illness is more contextualised within the biomedicine paradigm and uh, it's one of the criticisms against this is, become, is that it's become medicalised. But what this has done is bring, uh, bring more of the mental health states of mind into more focus and more attention and concern for scientific researchers are hoping to have impact within the field. And then to move on to trauma, um, trauma is a human experience, and, but it's been correlated with the disorder of post-traumatic stress disorder, which can occur from trauma if symptoms, which I'll discuss later, uh, persist for over a certain uh, period of time. Um, so its prevention then is of concern for therapeutic reasons and also 
uh, as I'll explain in the talk, uh, what is called as an enhancement of, of ourselves as persons and what we might achieve for ourselves. So prevention, why is prevention of post-traumatic stress disorder important? Trauma is a, it's a huge problem. Uh, PTSD has been described by the World Health Organization as an example of one of the global burdens of disease in modern times. An exposure to traumatic events uh, is not so uncommon. For example, in the United States, it's estimated that between 50 and 60 percent of the population will be exposed to at least one traumatic event during their lifetime. Um, and as trauma is often the result of wars and disasters, it's a humanitarian crisis. And these tend to affect uh, people who are in low-income countries uh, with lack of mental health uh, care resources and that have a poor infrastructure for long-term long care support. And this could actually be a reason for supporting um, the erasure of trauma memories um, in countries where it is not possible to have psychological support, um, having a more um, pharmaceutical uh, uh, intervention might be more preferable and cost-effective um, in this situation. And also PTSD, it has devastating effects on our sense of well-being. Um, so just to look at the definition of trauma, because it's in itself quite problematic, the, uh, Greek, from the Greek terminology, it's translated as a psychic wound. And uh, Judith Herman, who's one of the, who's done a great deal of work within trauma, has defined it as an event outside of normal human experience, which corresponds with the um, psychiatric diagnostic standard manual definition as well. And it includes both experiencing and witnessing. But this, this uh, uh, definition itself is problematic. A person who has grown up in the Congo, for example, exposed to all kinds of violence and conflict, um, will have a very different sense of normality than somebody who has grown up in a very, um, perhaps, rural, middle-class um, family environment in the United States. And the founding father of psychology, Pierre Janet, claimed that trauma is the inability to translate an event into, na into a narrative memory. So the problem with um, trauma becomes not so much the experience, but how the person experiences it. And in this sense, trauma theorist Kathy Karouf has explained trauma as an unclaimed experience. It exists in a way that the person is not able to um, accept it, but they are not able to refute it as well. So they become in a state of this paradoxical um, anguish. Um, and the American Psychiatric Association, they, the way they approach PTSD is that it's a universal, timeless and cross-cultural diagnosis. I'll explain some of the problems of this later on, but what this illustrates is um, all, all human beings are vulnerable to uh, experiencing um, trauma in, in a negative way. So some of the ethical implications of a diagnosis of PTSD. It is reflective of the critique of Western scientific knowledge, it, and this becomes disseminated by humanitarian workers within cross-cultural settings, and it also represents the framework and the approach that is taken towards somebody's um, existential crisis, so to speak, in, a, in the clinical setting. Where scientific medicine intervenes in the body, psychiatric medicine intervenes with, the, with, per, with who you are as a person. Um, and in this sense, the psychiatric uh, innovations, such as the memory modifications that I will talk about, present uh, um, unprecedented normative questions of who we are and who we are able to become. And another issue about um, PTSD is when you have a diagnosing a person with a PTSD sometimes um, can actually have a more devastating effect. So this has been uh, one of the critiques of PTSD in cross-cultural settings where there might be potential for mismatch between local priorities and psychosocial services provided by outside agencies. And this is uh, especially important in regions where stigma against mental illness is heavily present. So, for example, there's research been undertaken in Sri Lanka that, uh, following the, the tsunami where d uh, diagnosing um, the community with PTSD actually led to a, a decrease in mental health because the terminology of depression, anxiety was not a, a frequent terminology that was known to the 
um, that was part of the discourse of, of the culture and it, because of the stigma of mental health it actually marginalised those who were suffering greater than if they hadn't received the diagnosis and the side effect of this was that the, um, mem the people who were diagnosed with PTSD they felt more isolated and they were shunned from their family or community and they they, instead of participating in more of the rituals that were in place for um, issues they were facing, such as bereavement, they, they shut off from that and that's why their mental health deteriorated further. So, also, the whole notion of there being a disorder of PTSD is a normative judgment and at to what extent do feeling, does feeling of pain um, become pathological and um, at what point uh, does suffering um, in a certain way become abnormal. This, there's a judgment here about what is, what is the level um, required for it to become a pathology. So the diagnosis of PTSD is if, it's, if you suffer from symptoms from uh, four weeks after what has been defined as a, the traumatic event. So this in itself is, is a normative judgment. Um, and diagnosis also is determined by referring to a set of symptoms um, and this is a, almost a prescription of a traumatic reaction. If some people experience the symptoms, some people do not experience the symptoms, but um, nevertheless the symptoms do not exist as independent objects. The, there are reasons for why um, the symptoms occur. So flashbacks, for example, um, have been interpreted as a way of trying to um, for the person to try and process the information in a way that is um, in proportion to the amount of information they're able to receive. So it's the brain's way of trying to um, help the person recognise in small amounts the experiences that they have un undergone but they cannot deal with fully as an integrated procedure. So the, the, function, the symptoms that I have can have a positive function but they uh, can also be treated as a negative symptom. Um, and it also medicalizes um, the experience of the person. So a person experiencing depression, anxiety, dissociated symptoms, and pain, and a lot of pain and trauma victims is somatized pain. Um, by medicalizing this, it divorces these experiences from the person further, so the person is unable to understand their meaning, and um, th this creates that sense of uh, limbo even further. And in the, because of this, the narrative elements are deleted when the person's trauma is reduced to a set of symptom, symptoms and the person's story becomes irrelevant. Um, part of the paradox of trauma is the inability to form the narrative memory, as I mentioned earlier. So um, try reducing um, the person's capacity or agency to be able to uh, construct their own narrative can, in fact, um, create a, a greater traumatic experience for the person. And if we look at the ways that trauma manifests in a society, we can see that there's this dual paradox between remembering and forgetting. Um, uh, every, many societies we have memorials, historical legacies that um, we are reminded of the importance of not forgetting. We celebrate anniversaries of um, certain deaths or certain landmarks in our history, both our collective history and our personal histories, and it affects the relationship with those around us and determines who we are going to differentiate from, who we might consider to be our friend, who we might consider to be an enemy. So these aspects of our cultural behaviours symbolise the weight of remembering, um, but remembering is also a, a double-edged sword. It, uh, in, the, in PTSD, the remembering is also, um, the, the brain's way of trying to make us remember is met against our resistance to try and forget it. And the, the reasons we want to for, try to forget is because um, the, the traumatic event, by its very, the virtue of its definition of being an event outside of normal human experience, is perceived to be out of our control. There, there's a lack of autonomy there, um, a, a, d a detachment from our... Um, free will or our um, agency in, in the way that we, of what we wanted to happen in our lives. Um, and the elements that, the symptoms that affect our day-to-day -day life are very haunting. They have uh, flashbacks, nightmares, inability to associate with certain places and smells, 
um, create a, a phobia against elements that remind the person of the trauma. So this it makes it very difficult for a person to be able to navigate or resume their life that they used to have. Um, so and also they a person uh, is resistant against being defined by certain phenomena. PTSD is a, a um, the diagnosis is a, a definition of somebody's identity and uh, Tyler Parsons, a sociologist, talked about illness and um, the kind of role a person takes on when they, have, when they are considered to be sick. PTSD has a similar effect as well um, and also pa uh, PTSD patients are vulnerable to behaviours such as substance and alcohol abuse, feeling dissociated and committing suicide. So there is a, a strong um, a sense of wanting to be able to forget what has happened. And uh, currently, uh, the therapeutic model for trauma uh, involves a certain different methods. Um, there's psychoanalytical methods, so um, trying to engage with the experience, um, trying to re-experience what the person felt initially, um, but re-experiencing it in a safer environment so the person can understand what the experience meant for them. Um, in the UK, if, uh, especially, cognitive behavioural therapy and dialectic behavioural therapy are very um, popular approaches to trauma, where it tries to help a person develop a structure again and organise their information and try to um, reprogram how they are processed in the world around them. Uh, eye movement desensitization reprogramming is another um, method that's come out of recent neuroscientific research where it tries to re-engage different parts of the brain that were affected during the trauma. And also spiritual practices have been um, promoted as well as, a, as interventions for people who've experienced trauma. So when I talk about should we erase trauma memories, I'm talking about certain forms of memory modifications that are not currently available, um, but they are being discussed and potentially uh, viable in the future. Advancements in neurobiology have been providing a greater detailed account of our memory and its different subsystems, and it's the memory that's be, that is affected during trauma. We are able to identify um, now areas of the memory, such as autobiographical memory, that are affected um, from trauma and um, these kind of approaches are leading to a more targeted therapeutic medicine. And even now, medications such as propranolol are used. Um, propranolol was one of the first beta blockers that were made available, and it's currently used to treat um, other disorders such as anxiety. But clinical trials have shown um, in the United States that if propranolol is used um, within a, a, a certain time period after the traumatic incident, it can have an effect on the way that memories are encoded, so it can actually prevent the, um, the memories forming in the, initially in the first place. Um, so the person does not, uh, it's as a way of preventing PTSD. Um, and other proposals for enhancement techniques to modify memory include gene therapies, so including more targeted gene therapy to alter the receptor processing in the memory to um, make it more localised, what we are able to remember, and also to be able to delete certain memories or certain parts of the memory that are considered to be the site where um, trauma evoking memories originate. So look at, to look at PTSD in the context of the enhancement debate, um, enhancement has been def uh, defined by Julian Salvorescu and his colleagues at Oxford as any change in the biology or psychology of a person which increases the chance of leading a good life in a relevant set of circumstances. And for Salvarescu, he thinks that enhancement is indistinguishable from therapeutic interventions, um, in the sense that the telos for both enhancement and ther therapy is to promote a, a better sense of well-being um, for, the, for the person. And the WHO defines health as, a, uh, as trying to maintain a state of physical, mental, spiritual well-being. So that is the context in which um, this is discussed and the normative claim then comes, comes to be well, should, cl should clinical settings offer memory modification technologies given that they, there is um, the argument that they can 
improve the well-being, the mental health of the individual suffering from PTSD. And some of the current work that's been coming out of this, looking at the normativity of memory modification, has been looking at um, issues around self-knowledge, truth, uh, identity, and concluding that as long as there's no harm created to the individual, then, um, then the technology should be permitted. But I think this view is too narrow. Um, and here are some questions that try to ch that challenge the use of med memory modification techniques. So uh, if a victim of a violent assault is treated in a way that alters memory, is their testimony going in court going to be as valid? And um, this is a feature of um, many instances of trauma, natural disasters, war. People are often um, challenged uh, to be able to recount their experiences whether for the media, whether for legal circumstances. Um, so to what extent will the alteration of the memories alter the validity of their account? Or if a society is trying to recover from mass atrocities, such as the legacy of war, genocide, what are, what are the political ramifications of the erasure of trauma-evoking memories? And are there any potential misuses or uses um, of memory modification techniques um, if they are used as interventions in the military. Uh, okay, so I try to think about this in the sense of is cure from trauma via memory modification an enhancement? So the altera alteration, the erasure or prevention of the formation of trauma memories is a powerful manipulation of a state of mind. It is changing who we are. Um, and the, it is the binary opposite to the harm that the memories cause. And the important point to remember here is that memories, memory, uh, the memory is the causation of the person's um, semantic um, experience of the trauma. So m the root of the problem is diagnosed to be in the memory rather than in the circumstances that uh, sustain the trauma in the first place. Um, an enhancement is premised on our understanding of the human nature. It's the desire to maximize our potential, and it's this potential that an experience of trauma can threaten because it prohibits the person from developing or experiencing the world in the best possible way. So curing trauma, um, the result of this, changes our ontology as human beings. It bypasses the capacity for a certain suffering. So it is this enhancement. Um, it's not a... Um, uh, making a surplus to a particular capacity that we already have is actually reducing or um, minimizing some one of the greatest features of ourselves as human beings, which is the experience to suffer. And although this might not be a pleasant experience, it has a huge um, symbolic value throughout our whole history. Um, so I, I don't think that this fits in well with the, the model of enhancement. And I've tried to look at trauma in a more deconstructive way to try and understand uh, trauma uh, more of the co in a context. So um, we are bodies of our of the land around us. The land is a metaphysical, a metaphorical territory. We occupy um, a sense of be who we are in the world and a sense of our surroundings. And our relationship to the physical land around us is definitive of the environment, of the way that we experience things. So. Um, the French philosopher Jean-Luc Nancy says that the land is our fundamental framework for our birth and our death. Um, and in this sense, our experiences are relational. It's the antithesis of the reductive view of the mind. To try and locate trauma as an experience within a part of our memory um, in this view can become quite nonsensical. Um, and also, the, how do we define between an individual trauma and a collective trauma? Um, the whole notion of memory modification techniques is dependent on being able to localize um, somebody's experience. Uh, but trauma is a relational ph phenomenon. It affects the way that we feel we exist in the world and to our surroundings, as well as to those who we have relationships around us. We are cultural beings. Uh, for example, the, the anthropologist Van Wolpert said, uh, undertook field work in Namibia, and he, he looked at... Um, trying to define the self or define personhood. And he, he, his work showed that the sense of self of the, the herdsmen 
who spent many weeks alone, days, weeks with the herds of animals, had a had a, um, a relational sense of self that they who they were was actually part of the herds of animals that they were um, um, living with and engaging with. They it wasn't possible to identify um, selfhood of, on an individual basis. Um, so our con experience of a traumatic incident is conditional on context, and on this context, and it's very difficult to define ourselves as an individual being. And in this, this causes defining an individual trauma to be problematic. Um, the conditions of trauma are determined by the environment and the society we belong to. Uh, if if trauma um, originates within our context, then it's our context has the most pow is the most powerful tool in which we can mediate this. But Wigren, for example, he says that trauma victims are often actively silenced from, um, because of societal sentiments such as shame. So uh, a woman who is a victim of a sexual assault, for example, might um, suffer more in a society where she is unable to communicate or talk about her experiences uh, than in a society where she is able to seek support and not be judged. Um, so it's the um, socially constructed reactions to the particular incident that mm. can increase the person's uh, degree of PTSD. And thus defining the physical location, reducing trauma into just a memory is very problematic. So a contextual analysis of events outside of human, uh, normal human experience, such as trauma, require an embodied etymological and exogenesis understanding it is not possible just to look at trauma as an individual phenomenon. Uh, it reflects on the meaning of suffering and healing for individuals. Persons with a mental illness are seen as having a disease, which in a sense possesses their brain and mind and controls their behavior in a global way. And diagnosing uh, PTSD needs to be integrated with cultural context rather than presuming cross-cultural suitability. So to draw some conclusions from this, in light of um, applying the use of memory modification techniques, uh, it will, memory modification therapies for trauma work in a paradoxical manner to how we currently understand trauma. The whole trauma um, originates from the inability to process memory. So the treatment for this, as proposed by these techniques, is to uh, eliminate the capacity to have that memory in the first place. And this seems to be a, more of a backward step to treating trauma. Um, so memory modification as an intervention, whether uh, therapeutic or in, as an enhancement, is an alteration of our human nature. Um, we need to question this. We need to question what is the meaning of trauma for ourselves. Um, it, trauma is a, exists as a form of reflection in the world. The whole um, experiencing of something as very negative or as evil or um, as something that is absurd to how we understood the world around us is, uh, is a sign of how we judge situations and how, of our moral critique. And this ability is part of uh, uniqueness as human beings. Um, if we are unable to, dis if we minimize or lose the capacity to distinguish between what feels um, positive or negative to us, this, is, this could have um, more effects than we would like to have. Um, and traumatic, trauma symptoms are responses to our context. So mediating our society may be a more effective way than the elimination of our experiences. And in this sense, we need to understand trauma as something other than it being an object that's transferred from the external to the internal world of the individual. Locating a trauma memory is very different from locating the site of, um, of a tumor or of a particular bacteria. And such understandings of how we are talking about trauma, therefore, are going to determine the way that we treat phenomena as uh, such as PTSD as therapeutic. So, thank you.